Well, Robert, Robert, you have to you have to destroy democracy to preserve it. Everybody knows yeah, that, exactly. like, like they burn, did in Canada. You got to burn the village to save it. Now, speaking uh, of in, Canada, what the heck is going? They're locking up lawyers on New Year's Eve. They're threatening oh to kick God. Jordan, uh, send Jordan Peterson to re-education camp. Uh, Robert, it's it's it's. You think it couldn't get any worse? For those of you who don't know, I talked about it last week. Uh, John Carpe, president founder of the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. 17 months after the incident in which he hired a very, very stupid thing, hired a private investigator to follow a judge around, the judge who was presiding over one of his COVID cases. I mean, we know why he was doing it in theory, to try to catch the judge violating the very same protocol that they were going to now criminally enforce on the pastor for holding churches, whatever, church gatherings. That was 17 months ago. Hires a private investigator, gets found out, and I don't know how exactly, 17 months later, gets charged and arrested, spends 23 hours in jail. Uh, in, I think it's in Alberta. I think it's in Alberta. Um, and is released, but could have faced, I think the charges are intimidation and obstruction of justice. How, how hiring a private investigator could be intimidation, I don't know, but maybe there's case law to that. Uh, but so John Carpe gets arrested 17 months after, you know, due process, timely charges be damned, goes to jail, uh, spends a night in jail. And um, that's one aspect of the insanity. Jordan Peterson, clinical psychologist, certified, you know, has his license, um, is now being pursued by his order for tweets that he made, one of which was some dude that he gets into a tiff with on Twitter saying, the overpopulation, the animals are going to die, the world's going to burn, it's, it's terrible. Overpopulation is a terrible thing. Twitter, uh, Twitter, Jordan Peterson replies with a tweet, you're free to leave. And now someone filed a complaint. It's unethical for a psychologist to encourage suicide, uh, to make jokes about suicide, et cetera, among other tweets. And he's got other tweets. I, I said to that, you know, if that tweet was encouraging suicide, well, then the other guy's tweet was encouraging genocide. Because to say it's overpopulation, it's a terrible thing. That means kill people. Or it's just an idiotic uh, a take or position that, yeah, the world's overpopulated. Well, you're free to leave. Uh, no, I, I like it here. I, we just need to, you know, make other people leave. Um, and, and then the ultimate kicker to that story is uh, journalist Rachel Gilmore from the Global News trying to find other tweets to get Jordan Peterson in trouble with. Like the, the joke now is that in Canada, journalists hold the citizens accountable to the government and not the government accountable to the, to, to the citizens. It's madness. Jordan Peterson is one, you know, he's, he's uh, as they said on... Uh, Joe Rogan episode, you know, he's one of the people that has escaped, uh, that has uh, achieved escape velocity. He doesn't need his license. He doesn't need this shit. He is free in the sense that, you know, piss off, take it, and it will have no consequence on me, but I'm going to fight it tooth and nail, and may may there be more people like Jordan Peterson. But uh, I, I don't know, Robert, you, you looking at this from the States, it, it's not so laughable anymore. They, they they suspended Norm Pattis for six months, but for for cause. Uh, I mean, what's your, what's your take well, on nothing it? exposes the absurdity then in the same week that the january 6th committee disclosed thousands of social security numbers of government officials the and for to no sanction of any kind that i'm aware of to any punishment many of them are licensed that are on there they're either doctors or lawyers many of them have credentials that are on that january 6th committee none of them are going to face any consequence there's people talking about suing it'll be very difficult to get any remedy there too unfortunately at the same week, they go after Norm Pattis for accidentally uh, giving a link to a uh, discovery database to other lawyers for other Sandy Hook plaintiffs. That's all he did. He didn't disclose it to the world, anything else. And in that link, they found information about Alex Jones's whole entire phone history, uh, at least parts of it including private photos of his wife, uh, which they then used to their political profit, then leaked it illicitly, illicitly used it in a court proceeding, et cetera, for which they have faced no adverse consequences whatsoever. Highly unethical conduct by Mark Bankston and others, one of the least uh, ethical lawyers I've ever met, bottom barrel scumbag who tried to uh, spread smear stories about me claiming I was trying to get him killed. That's what bottom barrel, whack job, lunatic, nut jobs were in the uh, Sandy Hook plaintiff's lawyer's side. Uh, the Connecticut ones are just a bunch of corrupt political hacks. Uh, the, the, the Texas ones are lunatics. 
uh, who, I mean, in fact, my joke about the lawyer was the, how he got to law, how Mark Bankston got to law school was that uh, he, he got a free ticket to the nut house and the Uber driver dropped him off the law school by accident. Uh, I mean, th th that's who these people are. But here you have someone like Norm Pattis, lifelong civil rights lawyer, lifelong criminal defense lawyer, uh, lifelong liberal uh, in Connecticut who has one mistake that uh, of, of sharing files that included his uh, the, the plaintiffs in the Connecticut's case, some of their medical records, which, by the way, they had put at issue in the case. So, frankly, there was no reason why this couldn't be admitted evidence into the trial. Pattis, to my knowledge, didn't try to go that route. But, I mean, the, the, when, when you make your medical issue a issue for the court, uh, at some point that quits being a private issue. You don't even have a right to privacy anymore because you've made it part of the public trial uh, issue. You put it at issue. I mean, this is one of the risks you have, right, if, 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 as a plaintiff. If you want to sue somebody and you want to make your mental health part of the case, well, guess what? They get to go into everything else that could go into your mental health, right? And you, most people don't like that. And it becomes part of the public record, part of cross-examination at court record. So based on things, as far as I could tell, if they were subject to discovery, then they were subject to public disclosure. There was no longer any privacy issue implicated, as far as I could tell. And it was only disclosed to other plaintiff's lawyers in another state who were working with those plaintiff's lawyers. So the, 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 there, was, there was no evidence of any harm whatsoever to any Sandy Hook plaintiff uh, in the case. And yet, based on that one accident, this fraud of a judge, Barbara Bellis, total disgrace to the bench. The same uh, one that we watched throughout the entire trial. It's it's yeah, not a different right. same judge. It's the same joke of a judge. Uh, so the joke of a justice in the state of Connecticut. Uh, Connecticut's always been a notoriously politically corrupt state, and it's not got any better. Uh, but Bellis is is a real uh, bell of of of, of incompetent uh, judgment. And so the uh, and the fact that she's recommending that Pattis be suspended for six months is ludicrous. Uh, it's outrageous. It's a reflection of why I have long preached against the licensure of everybody and everyone. You give power to the government and some corrupt hack, like this whack job judge, uh, to uh, live in a pretend de a, delu a world so delusional, she thinks billion-dollar judgments are reasonable. <laughs> you have to be nuts to think this. She is such a disgrace to the bench. But, the, um, this is, uh, but this is the ultimate proof of it. Uh, if you had any doubts about her bias and prejudice, if somehow, let's say you're as as willfully blind as legal bites, and you, uh, uh, and you just can't figure out how that verdict is excessive, just can't figure it out uh, while your hub, hubby's doing deep state work. Well, maybe now, maybe you can. Uh, or if you're one of those other folks out there, maybe you can recognize and realize what a corrupt hack this is, that she has weaponized her power now to suspend a lawyer for six months uh, based on the, one of the weakest claims I have ever seen against a lawyer in a disciplinary setting. It, <laughs> setting aside the, the legal, for anybody who doesn't know the context, I like Alita. At one point, she was assessing the damages and says, well, $965 million. I didn't watch the trial. I don't know if it's justified as if there's anything in on God's green earth that can justify a billion dollar damage against I, I the FBI no guy. Proof of no physical harm, no proof of reputational harm and no real proof of emotional harm. Frank. Well, that's, and that's the, the second biggest uh, winner of that jackpot was the FBI agent who had who, had, who knew nobody who died. N nobody who knew nobody who died. Nobody. nobody. Um, but but everyone, everyone should appreciate the same judge in this that issued this sanction to uh, to Norm Pattis is the same one who said I won't hesitate to hold Jones in contempt uh, criminal contempt if he goes beyond the scope of what he's allowed to talk about in his testimony. If he defends himself or says he's innocent, he went to jail. So that, she, that same judge, same joke this, of a judge. Pattis, for anybody who doesn't, I, I don't even know what the medical records were. My question was, to whom? It's not like he published them, at, no. released it to the All public. All that happened was he was trying to transfer discovery from uh, one party to another between the Connecticut case and the Texas case. And in the process, he shared discovery that was only relevant in the Connecticut case and the Texas case. But only, to my knowledge, the only people who saw that were, were lawyers. Well, the only people who could you know, have seen were it. Published in the world. Number one. Number two, to my knowledge, it's public. I mean, if it was subject to discovery, I don't see where the right to privacy applies. If you have a right to privacy, then it's not subject to discovery in the first place. If you had to turn it over in discovery, 
then the right to privacy has already been resolved. You don't have a right to privacy to it anymore. So it's not clear there was any private right of those information or those records. And then third, there was no evidence ever produced that it was intentional at all. Yeah, well, None. But, all evidence I, was it clearly was accidental. He's he's going to turn over all of Alex Jones's personal phone records intentionally. Well, I mean, come that, on. That, that and that was the issue. I think now it, it comes back um, is that apparently he was advised that the link connected to some of Alex Jones's stuff, and they said, "Did you intend to send that to us?" And apparently he didn't reply within the ten days, or apparently it said, "Please disregard that link," and they didn't disregard. Well, that's it. the they Texas took- part. That that's the Texas lawyers part. I don't know how where Pattis plays into that. But the 10 day rule only applies in Texas, doesn't okay. apply in Connecticut. Yep. I might in have Connecticut, gotten- you have additional uh, remedies. And in my view, the 10 day rule is is not an accept is not a uh, sole basis by which you can. But then, then I might have gotten fall this- back, as they say, in- in- inadvertent. But if you're if you're if you're Mark Banks and you know that, in fact, he said so on the record. He said he knew he wasn't supposed to get it. And what did he do? He publicly disclosed it to the world, and then he went and leaked it. No consequences for him. None. These corrupt judges are just exposing themselves as the political hacks that they are. They're a disgrace to the rule of law. And the example that they're using against Norm Pattis is a reminder why we should reconsider licensure laws in America. And, no and at a minimum, we should limit who has the power uh, to just this. Is, I have a problem with this, uh, with the judicial branch having this authority, period. It's the only part of our government where the one branch gets to write the rules. One branch gets to enforce the rules. One branch gets to adjudge the rules. And guess what? It happens to be the branch governing people who see their own misconduct, their own malfeasance, their own misdeeds. Uh, This is exactly the judicial branch is exactly the branch that should have no role whatsoever in the uh, licensure process. None. Why? Because they have a conflict of interest. Their interest is in manipul- is in not having lawyers expose their malfeasance and misconduct. And the best way to do so is say, hey, I control your licensure. You better play ball. You better be nice. You better not call my decision a wuss decision. You better not do things like this, or I'll, maybe I'll take it out on you. Maybe I'll strip that license from you. That's why they should never have had that power. They've proven incapable of disciplining themselves. They've proven incapable of being apolitical and disciplining others. And just in case anybody might not know, the January 6th committee released the social security numbers of a number of the Trump allies, witnesses, whatever. Over 2,000. Over 2,000. They're clearly that, illegal. Clearly it's a, illegal. It's a big problem. I mean, look, medical information is fine. It might it might provide compromise. That's information that was not public, right? Unlike if, if you're mom in a lawsuit and I'm forced to give you documents in a discovery, that by definition means it's no longer private. Right now, you can make an argument for sealing it based on it being mm-hmm. only material to the proceeding until it's actually exposed in court, until there's a trial, etc. Uh, but as a whole, you can't keep that permanently secret. You just can't uh, because that's the whole point of a public trial and a right to a public trial. And we don't want to keep that secret. By contrast, the committee had access to information that was not public, that was by definition legally private. Uh, that they only author had access to because they're the co- congressional committee, and they went and disclosed it to the world. So uh, the people now, that real privacy violations, zero consequence. Norm Pattis for defending Alex Jones, suspended for six months. It's it's preposterous, but now, just not to give anybody any bad ideas. What what nefarious things can people do with social security numbers? It's it's a much more compromising. Well, the piece biggest problem is if you have all nine, then it, it's often people's codes, credit cards. Uh, ID threat, ID theft risk goes way up. Uh, other forms of fraud risk go way up. So, I mean, I was in Tennessee and people were telling me about people that are pretending to own property, trying to sell that property. The way, the way they were able to do it is they got their social security number, went and got a driver's license in that person's name, convinced the notary that that was who they were. And they almost were able to successfully sell somebody else's property as their own. 